This is Reed Daly's Come Follow Me podcast. In this podcast series, lesson and scripture audio are combined for a hands-free experience. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. At the end of this podcast, you can hear our full disclosure statement or read it on readdaily.live. May 31st through June 6th, Doctrine and Covenants, Section 60 through 62. All flesh is in mine hand. President Ezra Taft Benson taught that when we study the scriptures, quote, testimonies will increase, commitment will be strengthened, families will be fortified, personal revelation will flow, end quote. From the Power of the Word, Ensign May 1986. In June 1831, Joseph Smith held a conference with the elders of the church in Kirtland. There, the Lord organized some of the elders into companionships and sent them to Jackson County, Missouri with this charge. Preach by the way. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 52, verse 10. Let them go two by two, and thus let them preach by the way in every congregation, baptizing by water and the laying on of the hands by the water's side. Many of the elders did so diligently but others did not. So when the time came to travel back to Kirtland, the Lord said, quote, With some elders I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. End quote. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verse 2. But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. Many of us can feel sympathy for these elders. We may also feel hesitant to open our mouths and share the gospel. Maybe we too are impeded by the fear of man. Maybe we doubt our worthiness or abilities. Whatever our reasons, the Lord knoweth the weakness of man and how to succor us. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verse 1. Behold and hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, even Jesus Christ, your Advocate, who knoweth the weakness of man, and how to succor them who are tempted. Scattered throughout these revelations to early missionaries are reassurances that can help us overcome our fears about sharing the gospel or other fears we might be facing. I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above. I am able to make you holy. All flesh is in mine hand. And be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst. See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verses 4 and 7. For I, the Lord, rule in the heavens above, and among the armies of the earth, and in the day when I shall make up my jewels, all men shall know what it is that bespeaketh the power of God. And in this place, let them lift up their voice and declare my word with loud voices, without wrath or doubting, lifting up holy hands upon them. For I am able to make you holy, and your sins are forgiven you. Section 61, verses 6 and 36. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. And now verily I say unto you, and what I say unto one, I say unto all, Be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you. Ideas for Personal Scripture Study Doctrine and Covenants, Section 60 and 62 the Lord is pleased when I open my mouth to share the gospel. We've all had experiences when we could have shared the gospel with someone, but for some reason we didn't. As you read the Lord's words to early missionaries who failed to open their mouths, think about your own opportunities to share the gospel. 
How is your testimony of the gospel like a talent or a treasure from God? In what ways do we sometimes hide our talent? See Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verse 2. But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given unto them because of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. See also Matthew chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came, and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Lord corrected these early missionaries, but he also tried to inspire them. What encouraging messages from him do you find in section 60 and 62? How do these messages build your confidence in sharing the gospel? In the days ahead, look for opportunities to open your mouth and share what God has entrusted to you. See also Doctrine and Covenants, section 33, verses 8 through 10. Open your mouths, and they shall be filled, and you shall become even as Nephi of old, who journeyed from Jerusalem in the wilderness. Yea, open your mouths, and spare not, and you shall be laden with sheaves upon your backs. For lo, I am with you. Yea, open your mouths, and they shall be filled, saying, Repent, repent, and prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his paths straight for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Section 103, verses 9 through 10. For they were set to be a light unto the world, and to be the saviors of men. And inasmuch as they are not the saviors of men, they are as salt that has lost its savor, and is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. 
Dieter F. Uchtdorf, Missionary Work, Sharing What is in Your Heart, and Signer Leah Hona, May 2019. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 61, Verses 5-6 through and 14-18 through Are all waters cursed by the Lord? For I, the Lord, have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Nevertheless, all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it shall be said in days to come, that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it, in its time, for the use of my saints, that they may partake the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment, that what I say unto one, I say unto all, that you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters that they come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail and they are caught in snares. The Lord's warning in Doctrine and Covenants section 61 was in part a warning about the dangers his people would face while traveling to Zion on the Missouri River, which was known at that time for being dangerous. This warning should not be interpreted to mean that we should avoid traveling by water. The Lord has all power, including power over the waters. See verse 1. Behold and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power, who is from everlasting to everlasting, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Doctrine and Covenants, section 61 through 62. The Lord is all powerful and can preserve me. On the way back to Kirtland, Joseph Smith and other church leaders had a life-threatening experience on the Missouri River. See Saints, Volume 1, pages 133 through 134. Soon after the funeral, Ezra and other church elders started their journey back to Kirtland with Joseph, Oliver, and Sidney. Ezra was relieved to be returning home to Ohio. Unlike Edward, he had not had a change of heart about Joseph or the location of Zion. The men launched canoes onto the wide Missouri River just north of Independence and paddled downstream. At the end of the first day of travel, they were in good spirits and enjoyed a dinner of wild turkey along the riverbank. On the following day, however, the August weather was hot and the river was wild and difficult to navigate. The men quickly grew tired and soon began criticizing each other. As the Lord God liveth, Oliver finally shouted at the men, if you do not behave better, some accident will befall you. Joseph took the lead in his canoe the next afternoon, but some of the elders were upset with him and Oliver and refused to paddle. At a dangerous bend in the river, they hit a submerged tree and nearly capsized. Fearing for the lives of everyone in the company, Joseph and Sidney ordered the elders off the river. After they set up camp, Joseph, Oliver, and Sidney tried to talk to the group and ease tensions. Irritated, the men called Joseph and Sidney cowards for getting off the river, mocked the way Oliver paddled his canoe, and accused Joseph of acting like a dictator. The quarrel lasted long into the night. Rather than stay up with the company, Ezra went to bed early, deeply critical of Joseph and the elders. Why, he wondered, would the Lord trust the keys of his kingdom to men like these? The Lord used this opportunity to warn and instruct his servants. What do you find in Doctrine and Covenants 61 that encourages you to put your trust in the Lord as you face your own challenges? For example, why is it important to know that God is from everlasting to everlasting? See verse 1. Section 61. Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet on the bank of the Missouri River, McKilwain's Bend, August 12, 1831. On their return trip to Kirtland, the Prophet and ten elders had traveled down the Missouri River in canoes. On the third day of the journey, many dangers were experienced. Elder William W. Phelps, in a daylight vision, 
saw the destroyer riding in power upon the face of the waters. 1 through 12. The Lord has decreed many destructions upon the waters. 13 through 22. The waters were cursed by John, and the destroyer rides upon their face. 23 through 29. Some have power to command the waters. 30 through 35. Elders are to journey two by two and preach the gospel. 36 through 39. They are to prepare for the coming of the Son of Man. Behold and hearken unto the voice of him who has all power, who is from everlasting to everlasting, even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Behold, verily thus saith the Lord unto you, O ye elders of my church, who are assembled upon this spot, whose sins are now forgiven you. For I, the Lord, forgive sins, and am merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. But verily I say unto you that it is not needful for this whole company of mine elders to be moving swiftly upon the waters, whilst the inhabitants on either side are perishing in unbelief. Nevertheless, I suffered it that ye might bear record. Behold, there are many dangers upon the waters, and more especially hereafter. For I the Lord have decreed in mine anger many destructions upon the waters, yea, and especially upon these waters. Nevertheless all flesh is in mine hand, and he that is faithful among you shall not perish by the waters. Wherefore, it is expedient that my servant, Sidney Gilbert, and my servant William W. Phelps, be in haste upon their errand and mission. Nevertheless, I would not suffer that you should part until you were chastened for all your sins, that you might be one, that you might not perish in wickedness. But now verily I say, it behooveth me that ye should part. Wherefore, let my servants, Sidney Gilbert, and William W. Phelps take their former company, and let them take their journey in haste, that they may fill their mission, and through faith they shall overcome. And inasmuch as they are faithful, they shall be preserved, and I, the Lord, will be with them. And let the residue take that which is needful for clothing. Let my servant, Sidney Gilbert, take that which is not needful with him, as you shall agree. And now, behold, for your good, I gave unto you a commandment concerning these things, and I, the Lord, will reason with you, as with men in days of old. Behold, I, the Lord, in the beginning blessed the waters, but in the last days, by the mouth of my servant John, I cursed the waters. Wherefore, the days will come that no flesh shall be safe upon the waters. And it shall be said in days to come that none is able to go up to the land of Zion upon the waters, but he that is upright in heart. And as I, the Lord, in the beginning cursed the land, even so in the last days have I blessed it, in its time, for the use of my saints, that they may partake the fatness thereof. And now I give unto you a commandment, that what I say unto one, I say unto all, that you shall forewarn your brethren concerning these waters, that they come not in journeying upon them, lest their faith fail and they are caught in snares. I the Lord have decreed, and the destroyer rideth upon the face thereof, and I revoke not the decree. I the Lord was angry with you yesterday, but today mine anger is turned away. Wherefore, let those concerning whom I have spoken, that should take their journey in haste, again I say unto you, let them take their journey in haste. And it mattereth not unto me, after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or by land, let this be as it is made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. And now concerning my servants Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith, Jr., and Oliver Cowdery, let them come not again upon the waters, save it be upon the canal, while journeying unto their homes. Or in other words, they shall not come upon the waters to journey, save upon the canal. Behold, I the Lord have appointed a way for the journeying of my saints, and behold, this is the way, that after they leave the canal, they shall journey by land, inasmuch as they are commanded to journey, 
and go up unto the land of Zion. And they shall do like unto the children of Israel, pitching their tents by the way. And behold, this commandment you shall give unto all your brethren. Nevertheless, unto whom is given power to command the waters? Unto him it is given by the Spirit to know all his ways. Wherefore let him do as the Spirit of the living God commandeth him, whether upon the land or upon the waters, as it remaineth with me to do hereafter. And unto you is given the course for the saints, or the way for the saints of the camp of the Lord to journey. And again verily I say unto you, my servants Sidney Rigdon, Joseph Smith Jr. and Oliver Cowdery, shall not open their mouths in the congregations of the wicked until they arrive at Cincinnati. And in that place they shall lift up their voices unto God against that people. Yea, unto him whose anger is kindled against their wickedness, a people who are well nigh ripened for destruction. And from thence let them journey for the congregations of their brethren, for their labors even now are wanted more abundantly among them than among the congregations of the wicked. And now concerning the residue, let them journey and declare the word among the congregations of the wicked, inasmuch as it is given. And inasmuch as they do this, they shall rid their garments, and they shall be spotless before me. And let them journey together, or two by two, as seemeth them good. Only let my servant Reynolds Cahoon and my servant Samuel H. Smith, with whom I am well pleased, be not separated until they return to their homes, and this for a wise purpose in me. And now verily I say unto you, and what I say unto one, I say unto all, Be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst, and I have not forsaken you. And inasmuch as you have humbled yourselves before me, the blessings of the kingdom are yours. Gird up your loins and be watchful and be sober looking forth for the coming of the Son of Man, for he cometh in an hour you think not. Pray always that you enter not into temptation, that you may abide the day of his coming, whether in life or in death. Even so, Amen. There are similar insights in section 62. What does the Lord teach you about himself and his power in this revelation? Ponder faith-building experiences you have had when the Lord helped you overcome spiritual or physical adversity. Doctrine and Covenants, Section 62 The Lord wants me to make some decisions as seemeth me good. Sometimes the Lord gives us specific direction, and other matters He leaves up to us to decide. How do you see this principle illustrated in Doctrine and Covenants, Section 62? Section 62 Revelation given through Joseph Smith the Prophet on the bank of the Missouri River at Sheraton, Missouri, August 13, 1831. On this day the Prophet and his group, who were on their way from Independence to Kirtland, met several elders who were on their way to the land of Zion, and, after joyful salutations, received this revelation. 1 through 3. Testimonies are recorded in heaven. 4 through 9. The elders are to travel and preach according to judgment and as directed by the Spirit. Behold and hearken, O ye elders of my church, saith the Lord your God, even Jesus Christ, your Advocate, who knoweth the weakness of man, and how to succor them who are tempted. And verily mine eyes are upon those who have not as yet gone up unto the land of Zion, wherefore your mission is not yet full. Nevertheless, ye are blessed, for the testimony which ye have borne is recorded in heaven for the angels to look upon, and they rejoice over you, and your sins are forgiven you. And now continue your journey. Assemble yourselves upon the land of Zion, and hold a meeting, and rejoice together, and offer a sacrament unto the Most High. And then you may return to bear record, yea, even all together, or two by two, as seemeth you good. It mattereth not unto me. Only be faithful, and declare glad tidings unto the inhabitants of the earth, or among the congregations of the wicked. Behold, I the Lord have brought you together, 
that the promise might be fulfilled, that the faithful among you should be preserved and rejoice together in the land of Missouri. I, the Lord, promise the faithful and cannot lie. I, the Lord, am willing, if any among you desire to ride upon horses or upon mules or in chariots, he shall receive this blessing if he receive it from the hand of the Lord with a thankful heart in all things. These things remain with you to do according to judgment and the directions of the Spirit. Behold, the kingdom is yours, and behold and lo, I am with the faithful always. Even so, amen. See also Doctrine and Covenants section 60 verse 5. But verily I will speak unto you concerning your journey unto the land from whence you came. Let there be a craft made or bought, as seemeth you good, it mattereth not unto me, and take your journey speedily for the place which is called St. Louis. And section 61 verse 22. And it mattereth not unto me, after a little, if it so be that they fill their mission, whether they go by water or by land, let this be as it is made known unto them according to their judgments hereafter. How have you seen this principle in your life? Why is it good for us to make some decisions without specific direction from God? See also Ether, chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared cried unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, I have performed the work which Thou hast commanded me, and I have made the barges according as Thou hast directed me. And behold, O Lord, in them there is no light, whither shall we steer? And also we shall perish, for in them we cannot breathe, save it is the air which is in them, therefore we shall perish. And the Lord said unto the brother of Jared, Behold, Thou shalt make a hole in the top, and also in the bottom. And when thou shalt suffer for air, thou shalt unstop the hole and receive air. And if it be so that the water come in upon thee, behold, ye shall stop the hole, that ye may not perish in the flood. And it came to pass that the brother of Jared did so, according as the Lord had commanded. And he cried again unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, behold, I have done even as thou hast commanded me, and I have prepared the vessels for my people, and behold, there is no light in them. Behold, O Lord, wilt thou suffer that we shall cross this great water in darkness? And the Lord said unto the brother of Jared, What will ye that I should do, that ye may have light in your vessels? For behold, ye cannot have windows, for they will be dashed in pieces. Neither shall ye take fire with you, for ye shall not go by the light of fire. For behold, ye shall be as a whale in the midst of the sea, for the mountain waves shall dash upon you. Nevertheless, I will bring you up again out of the depths of the sea, for the winds have gone forth out of my mouth, and also the rains and the floods have I sent forth. And behold, I prepare you against these things, for ye cannot cross this great deep, save I prepare you against the waves of the sea, and the winds which have gone forth, and the floods which shall come. Therefore, what will ye that I should prepare for you, that ye may have light when ye are swallowed up in the depths of the sea? Doctrine and Covenants, section 58, verses 27 through 28. Verily I say, men should be anxiously engaged in a good cause, and do many things of their own free will, and bring to pass much righteousness. For the power is in them, wherein they are agents unto themselves. And inasmuch as men do good, they shall in no wise lose their reward. Ideas for Family Scripture Study and Home Evening Doctrine and Covenants, section 60, verses 2 through 3. Why were some early missionaries hesitant to share the gospel? Why do we sometimes hesitate? Consider role-playing how family members could share the gospel in a variety of settings.
Doctrine and Covenants, section 61, verses 36 through 39. What reasons do we see in these verses to be of good cheer? See also John, chapter 16, verse 33. Perhaps your family could write or draw pictures of things that bring them joy and collect them in a good cheer jar. Be sure to include pictures of the Savior and reminders of His love for us. Throughout the week, when family members need a reminder of reasons to be happy, they could choose something from the jar. Doctrine and Covenants, section 61, verse 36. How could you help your family remember that the Savior is in our midst? You could decide together where to prominently display a picture of Him in your home. How can we invite the Savior into our daily lives? Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verse 3. Maybe you could have a family testimony meeting after reading this verse. To explain what a testimony is, you could share portions of President M. Russell Ballard's message, Pure Testimony, Ensigner Liahona, November 2004. Why is it good to record our testimonies? Doctrine and Covenants, section 62, verses 5 and 8. Why doesn't the Lord give commandments about every aspect of our lives? According to verse 8, how are we to make decisions? For more ideas for teaching children, see this week's outline in Come Follow Me for Primary. Suggested Song, Testimony, Hymns number 137. Improving Personal Study. Let the Spirit guide your study. Let the Holy Ghost guide you. Be sensitive to His whisperings as He guides you toward the things you need to learn each day. Even if His whisperings suggest that you read or study a different topic than you usually would or in a different way. Thank you for listening to Read Daily's Come Follow Me podcast. Please share this podcast with family members and friends who can find us on readdaily.live or their favorite podcast application. The Intellectual Property Department of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is kindly granting permission to use the audio content heard in this podcast. We express our gratitude for their generosity. Along with granting permission, they ask that we make the following statement. Any products offered by ReadDaily.Live are neither made, provided, approved, nor endorsed by Intellectual Reserve, Inc., or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Any content or opinions expressed, implied, or included with any goods or services offered by ReadDaily.Live are solely those of Howard Patrick Holman and not those of Intellectual Reserve, Inc. or The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Thank you.